Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll start our meeting here in a, a moment or two, but I just wanted to thank you all for joining us today under these unique circumstances. It's good to be back in the commission chambers, although it looks significantly different with people spread apart and wearing masks. I know we have a number of folks on the WebEx uh, joining us via video connection. That includes the uh, commissioners as well as some of our key staff. So thank you all for joining us today with just a few items uh, for instruction before we get going, just to assure that we make this as smooth as possible, is if you're not speaking, if you'll please mute your, um, on your end, if you'll mute your, your uh, microphone, that would be great. That way we can avoid any, uh, any of that feedback that tends to come through. And we will uh, get started. We have myself, um, Councilman Scott Black, the Chair of the um, Board of Commissioners, and our Vice Chair, Councilwoman Olivia Diaz here in the chambers, and uh, we have the rest of our board on uh, on the phone and or video. So we'll get uh, go ahead and get started. Welcome you all to the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting on the 21st of May, 2020. And we'd like to ask Ms. Robinson if she'll take care of the roll call for us. Chairperson Scott Black. Here. Vice Chairperson Olivia Diaz. Here. Commissioner Cheryl Davis? Here. Commissioner Sharon Davis? Commissioner Misha Hooks? Commissioner Tick Sagerboom? Here. Commissioner Dan K. Shaw? Commissioner Lawrence Weekly? Of Commerce present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dominique. Uh, at this time, um, for, 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 uh, for the record, Sharon Davis is. This year. She just probably has her mic. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have we have a quorum present. Thank you again, all uh, commissioners, for joining us at uh, this time. And we'll will um, have the pledge of allegiance. Yeah. Those that are here in the chambers, if you'll please stand and join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Thank you so much. Uh, item number two on the agenda is public comment. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters that are on the agenda today for discussion and possible action. If you wish to be heard, come to the speaker's podium, clearly state your name and address, and please spell your last name for the record. The amount of time any single speaker is allowed will be limited to three minutes. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of the presentation, this will be done by the chair or the board by majority vote. And just for the, for the record and for the, the listening public, um, due to the unique circumstances and the, the technology that we're using to facilitate this meeting and in accordance and compliance with the governor's emergency directive, we have facilitated a few ways for um, members of the public to make public comment. We have a, a group of folks here that are today in the chambers and a limited number due to the uh, requirements put forth by the governor in terms of social distancing. We've also facilitated uh, an email address to uh, email comments to be read on the record. So we'll start with those. Uh, Ms. Robinson, did anyone email the, you with comments that need to be shared at this time? No emails were received. Okay, thank you for that. And so I'll, I'll open the uh, public comment for items that are on the agenda to those individuals that are present here today. If you'd like to um, step forward and state your name for the record, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Phyllis Carpenter, um, 5200 Alpine number five, and it's C-A-R-P-E-N-C-E-R. -E -E um, the, the flooring contract, didn't you guys just do a flooring contract for like, you upped it $500,000 and now you're doing another one? Like, it was just six months ago, I think, or last June or something. I thought that there was a contract for like a hundred, or, or it was it was like a million dollars and they went to one five, and now there's another one for 500,000. That's kind of... I don't believe this is an increase, but we'll be able to go. It's not an increase, so it's not an additional contract. Uh -huh. But we'll go through all the details on that, and that will um, we'll be able to address your question regarding okay. car the carpeting or flooring. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Yeah. Oh, here goes John Johnson. John Johnson, J O H N S O N. 3710 Florida Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I want to talk about the coronavirus update. 
Uh, being a Section 8 voucher recipient, I received a letter in the mail informing me of the things and the changes that were going to take place as a, a Section 8 recipient. And after reviewing and reading the letter, you know, I just want to come here and thank Chad and the rest of the staff for putting together what I think is something that was very amazing for me and my family. So for those, you know, who may not know, as a Section 8 recipient, I believe we don't have to pay rent until July 1st, I want to say it is. And, you know, of course, if, if you have the money, then, of course, you should pay it. But if, you know, you're unable to pay it, you don't have to worry about it until July 1st. After that, after that, when it time, you know, when it comes time for due, uh, Chad Williams set up with the legal counsel as well as, um, I believe, the nonprofit legal counsel that they have out here, that we're going to have legal representation when it comes to negotiating the rears. And they actually have a plan in place right now where they're going to try to negotiate us to have six months to pay back those arrears. And I believe you start paying the arrears back in September, I believe, um, what it was. But, you know, this is something that, you know, as, you know, someone that has to deal with my family, I have five kids, uh, two kids on the way now. Um, it's comforting to know that there's a plan in place and what to be expecting, you know, moving forward. So once again, I just want to thank Chad and his team for, you know, really stepping through when it comes to this corona. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. How are you today? Good afternoon. Um, Annette Walker, 900 Brush Street. Uh, Sartini Plaza and Annex. Um, I would just like to reiterate on uh, the comment that was just made and clarity as well. It's my understanding that they had uh, $350 billion for businesses and it's my understanding they had another stimulus for $250 billion and this only applied to businesses. Then it's my understanding um, they also gave funds for employees to help the employees um, if they were still being paid. And then it was my understanding if they were unemployed, then they qualified for unemployment with a extra $600 a week. And so now, I guess the concern I have here and- Ms. Walker? Yes, I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, just for those that are here to make public comment, this first public forum is for items that are posted on the agenda today for action. And so I just wanted to remind you of that. And there, there will also be a second public comment where you can speak on items or share thoughts on items that are on or off of the agenda. So, yes. Right. And the only, reason why, the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, it's my understanding the funds were paid so that we would not have to pay and it would be this is what the hardship is for and so if you're being paid or having opportunity to have those uh, losses then the residents who are most vulnerable and of course that is one of the things that COVID-19 has revealed is the disparity especially uh, the housing authority residents that they represent so we would like very much for that to be considered when it is brought about uh, the readers. Thank you. Thank you. Under Section 5 Business Items Number 13, our Executive Director will be speaking to COVID-19 operations and HUD regulations, so that could very well be covered at that time as well, though. So thank you, Ms. Walker. Anyone else like to speak during public comment? Is there anyone in the back room that um, is here for public comment? No? Okay. There's an awesome gentleman in blue shirt, but he's waved at me that we're good. So, okay, uh, seeing no one else, we'll go ahead and close the uh, public comment and we'll go to item number three, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting. Hard to believe our last meeting was on February 20th, 2020. I'll entertain a motion. If, if you make the motion uh, from the, the phone or, or video connection, if you'll just uh, state your name as well, commissioners, so we can document that. I move, okay. I move to accept the motion. I'll pass it. Okay, so uh, we have a, a thank you all for your participation. We'll have a, we have a motion on the floor by uh, Commissioner Segerbloom and a second by Councilwoman Diaz. All in favor, say aye. 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 And any opposed, if you'll state your name with the opposition. Seeing none, that, uh, that passes. We'll go to item number four. Approval of the agenda with the inclusion 
of any emergency items and deletion of any items um, for, for discussion and possible action. So uh, are there any, uh, Mr. Williams, are any things that we're changing or we're approving the agenda as posted? The consent agenda we are uh, approving as uh, posted. Okay, so item number four, approval of the agenda with inclusions. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the, uh, the agenda this for me. Senior Bloom, I'll move to approve the, the, the consent agenda. We're actually approving the, the agenda in its entirety. So can we change your motion, uh, Mr. Yes, Bloom? Yes, okay. I, I vote to, to approve, I make a motion to approve the entire agenda, including the consent agenda. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the clarity on that. And then uh, a second? I'll second it, but I have a question. Okay, uh, we, uh, before we go to the second, uh, Councilwoman Diaz has a question. Yes, ma'am. So Ms. Carpenter brought up the, um, I think she was alluding to uh, agenda item, item number five. Number five. Yes. So would we need to pull that agenda item forward to talk about concerns she raised during her comment and then so we could address that? So is there a way to approve maybe six through eight and then come back to five and do it separately? Yes, Commissioner Diaz, if uh, you wanna pull that agenda item, we can put that agenda item in the discussion and possible action and have our contracts manager, Johnny Shaw, talk about this contract. I would like to do that. Can I, is that my motion then to pull agenda item number five for further so discussion? So if that's okay with you, um, Commissioner Segerbloom, we're going to, if it's okay, allow Councilwoman Diaz to make the motion relative to the, to the agenda since she would like to request this item to be pulled for um, discussion, possible action, part of the agenda. Is that okay? Yes, and I will second her motion. Perfect. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Thank you so much. Now we'll go to section two of the, this uh, is the consent agenda and the change that we just made moves item five to the regular part of the agenda. So the consent agenda will comprise items six, seven, and eight as listed in the agenda. Any um, concerns, questions, or comments relative to items six, seven, and eight on the consent agenda from the Board of Commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Mr. Hey, Weekly. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, so I did have a question on um, number seven, but um, in talking with um, the DA's office, I can ask uh, this question under the executive director's recognition. Um, if not, would that be a um, It's not so much about um, item, it, it's, it's pretty much just talking finances and you no know, uh, individual uh, heads of the finance department would be able to answer those questions. So what we wrote the appointment, um, the appropriate time to ask it. Because nowhere else on the agenda we talk finances. Okay, uh, Mr. Williams. So if Mr. Weekly is talking about item seven and questions to that, I think our general counsel would agree that we need to pull that item for discussion. But if it's general finance questions, then- uh, Yes. Yes, then we can move forward and, and approve item seven and the consent agenda. And then Commissioner Weekly can ask his uh, finance questions in the uh, executive director's report. Okay, is, is that acceptable to you? Mr. Weekly. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That is, then um, under uh, um, I paid that question in reference. Hold on one second. And I believe it, it was a uh, no, no, seven will be five through. But when we uh, get to. So with that, Mr. Chairman. Seven and eight. Okay, thank you, sirs. Um, so just so I can, uh, you're breaking up just a little bit, Commissioner Weekly, so if I reiterate incorrectly what you just said, he made a motion that we uh, approve a consent agenda item six, seven, and eight with the thought that questions relative to finance can be uh, asked and discussed during the executive director's comments. Is that correct, sir, your, your motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and we'll entertain right. a second on that. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Tick I just want to make a comment. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, when I first saw this agenda, I was concerned that, that the two uh, changes were both related to men, but in discussing it with the executive director, he explained that uh, there's actually been many females uh, um, promoted and, uh, and hired under tenure, and so I felt comfortable that this is um, totally justified and, and women are being treated fairly. Thank you for that comment. Yes, indeed, we have a 60-40 split female-male ratio in our leadership team. And we're uh, actively working as a team for you know diversity and a, a depth of, of um, you know expertise in our leadership role. So thank you for that comment. 
Uh, so we have a motion. Uh, did we get a second on this from the motion by? Second. And a second. So we have a motion by. Yes. Okay. This is Trevor Davis. So before we um, make the motion, while it gets to approval, seven and eight, I do have questions on that. Okay. Okay. So now. Okay, hold on, hold on one second, uh, Commissioner Davis. If you have questions uh, relatively to these items, then we would pro we would need to uh, pull them from Wait. the consent agenda and move them to the regular part of the agenda. All right. Is that? Do you have questions that would constitute that? No, no, no. I have questions. Bills. I just want to ask the question, but I can't wait. Because once once we uh, if the consent, consent agenda item six seven eight are approved, then they're not subject to any further discussion. So if you um, or or action, I should say. So if the if the uh, contents of those items prompt questions for you that that you need answers and or discussion relative to, then we would. That's need. fine. So are you asking to move those to the um, one or both of those items out of the consent agenda? If we can. Okay. So, uh, so at this point, uh, the consent agenda I, uh, consists of item number six, uh, based on these discussions that we're having right now. So, uh, if it's okay, I'll, I'll go back to Commissioner uh, Weekly, who made the motion. Uh, are you willing to modify your motion, Commissioner Weekly, to um, for the consent agenda to constitute item number six, and the other three items will be moved to the body of the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chairman. And then we have the second, second by Commissioner Diaz. So if everyone is clear on that, I'll uh, go ahead and ask for the vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Did we all cast our votes? Do you need, you need a, an audi audible vote for folks so, so we can tally that? Is, is it unanimous or is there, is there a dissenting vote? No dissenting vote, then it's unanimous. So, okay, so um, we will move to item number section three commissioner executive director of recognitions item number nine acknowledgement of the department actually um, should we go ahead and we'll go ahead and do those in order now we'll do uh five seven and eight or when would we do those mr williams so we would do those once we get to uh section uh, four section four okay gotcha okay so section three um item number nine acknowledgement of our department mr williams uh, Chairperson, we will uh, give a nod to the department at the next board meeting. Okay. Thank you for that. We'll go to I, uh, section four. Um, this is the section for items taken from the consent agenda as well as the posted items for discussion of possible action. At this time, we will address item number seven. Um, and this is, I'm sorry, item number five. Let's uh, have a discussion about approval to award floor covering services, contract cloud carpet. And uh, I think we have a representative from Cloud Carpet potentially uh, on the line. And then also we'd like to uh, hear from our procurement manager, Mr. Shaw, to um, explain the background on this for us and to answer any questions from the board before we present for a vote. So Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I'll read the- Mr. Williams, thank you. Agenda yes, sir. item into the record. Thank you. Approval to award floor covering services contract to Cloud Park to see 225 in the amount of $519,722. This action is to request award of ongoing floor covering services contract agency-wide to Cloud Carpet. This contract award shall be pursuant to a jointer through Clark County, Nevada, as allowed and encouraged by HUD in the amount of $519,722, which is the remaining balance for these services previously approved by the board at the beginning of fiscal year 2020. This contract will begin on June 1st, 2020, and includes a four-year, one-year scenario renewal option. Cloud Carpet agrees and have committed to providing scenario with floor covering services with no increased costs. Therefore, they will be holding their prices for scenario from the previous five years. There is a section three component to this contract as per pursuant to 24 CFR part 135, of which Cloud Carpet is currently aware and agrees to the requirements. Shar Norton, a Cloud Carpet representative, is available on the phone to answer any questions. The action that is being requested is the executive director's request and approval 
to award floor covering services contract to Cloud Carpet C225 in the amount of $519,722. Uh, our contract and procurement manager, Johnny Shaw, is on the phone to answer uh, the questions uh, that the commissioners may have raised or to answer the question that was brought up doing public comment. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a joint report for Clark County. Uh, there is no uh, cost increase. The five hundred nineteen thousand has carried over from the uh, the old contract. Uh, the county went back out to bid, and Cloud won the uh, the award again. And so we're joining them uh, the county's contract with a new contract number, but the amount remains the same that the board approved in October. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Are there any questions from the board, Councilwoman Diaz? So thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Shaw, just to be clear, then this is not a duplication of funds that the that SNARA is um, going to pay, but it is uh, renewing a contract for services with them. Yes, it's, it's a carryover from the old contract, so the, uh, the amount stays the same. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, so the old contract it ends May 31st, and the new contract begins June 1st, uh, and the funds were carried over from the old contract to the new contract. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll, I'll turn this over to the board for a motion. I move to approve agenda item number five. And a second. I'll second. We have a motion from Councilwoman Diaz and a second from Commissioner Segerbloom. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. State your name. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Now we'll go to uh, item number seven. Mr. Williams. Approval to retitle Director of Finance position to Chief Administrative Officer. Reclassify this new title position from range 143 to range 149 and uh, approve change in positions job description to include supervisory oversight of the finance, IT, and procurement departments. In an effort to improve administrative operational efficiencies and supervision oversight, it has been determined through an organizational development assessment to create the position of Chief Administrative Officer. This Chief Administrative Officer will have direct supervision over the administrative departments of the agency through the managers of finance, contracts, procurement, and information technology. The executive director is requesting approval to title to retitle the director of finance position to chief administrative officer, reclassify this new title position from range 143 to 149, and approve change of position job description to include supervisory oversight of the finance, IT, and procurement departments. Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Williams. So we'll turn it over to the board, and particularly to um, Commissioner Cheryl Davis. You had some questions that you wanted to discuss regarding this item? I did. So, Mr. Williams, you have a question. So when you job, well, the titles, is there a um, increase that comes with this? And then what was the reason for the name change? I mean, why did you make the name? So, if I hear you correctly, the first question is there a salary compensation increase and then uh the second question is uh what was the reason for the title change yes sir all right yeah so there is a, a slight increase in the job description once it gets reclassified from range 143 to range 149 i think that'll be about a seven thousand dollar increase if i'm not mistaken um this position will be at the same range and step as our current position of deputy executive director. Um, and I believe Mr. Tool is being paid somewhere around 135,000. Uh, the title change, obviously, because of the elevated and supervisory responsibility over IT uh, procurement department, uh, we just didn't feel that the title would suit itself just to stay as director of finance. So we. Uh, came up with the title based on the recommendation of our HR manager of Chief Administrative Officer, which is kind of in line with what's going on now in the, the corporate uh, industry structure. Okay, I have another question now. From my understanding, from the, for the finance position, it sounds like the deaf person was already topped out. Is this the reason why we're changing the title? 
No. Well, we talk to oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just asking, is that the reason why we do want to retitle um, for the increase? No, we're not changing the director of finance title because the position or is at the top of the range. We're retitling it because of the change in job responsibilities and duties. Understood. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. That's what Dora wanted to know. Any other, any other questions? Um, regarding this item number seven from the board. Mr. Chair, if I may. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Williams, can you educate us as commissioners the additional responsibilities and work that this change in, in structure will create for the individual? Because $7,000, but I read three additional roles, supervisory roles and responsibilities. So can you give us a little bit more of a feel for how much more work this individual will also have on their plate? Yeah, so what what our plans are to come back to the board in the next fiscal year, where we will have a position of finance manager. Um, and so uh, Mr. Heron will transition more in the supervisory role over finance, so he won't be in the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the finance department, which will in increase his supervisory um, uh, uh, abilities. So right now, the structure of the organization is that the director of finance the manager of IT, the manager of contracts and bid procurement, uh, the manager of human resources all currently report to the executive director. Um, one of the things that we did as an organizational assessment and even in conversations with commissioners is that uh, you have encouraged me to be more out in the community, engaging with elected officials, uh, bringing deals in, uh, particularly what's going on with COVID-19. I have to engage more and be on conference calls. Uh, and then just also the strategic approach of, of the agency. Um, and that wears down some of the supervisory aspects where I can't provide the, the good supervision on those particular departments. Also, we have to keep in mind that when this agency merged initially, um, that position, um, Mr. Heron was already doing those exact supervisory duties that we're now asking him uh, to do again. Um, and we also have to look at Mr. Heron and uh, about four other members of our executive staff can retire. Um, and right now, if Mr. Heron chooses to retire, you know, at any time, even though he's committed to stay a few more years, we haven't built that capacity in a critical position um, for our finance department. And, and I think that's important. Um, so right now we have, all except our IT department, we have people that can backfill those leadership positions. And also, except for our affordable housing department. Was that helpful? Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners that are on video? Okay, thank you. Um, if, if not, I think Mr. Shaw is trying to. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, Councilman Shaw. Uh, I'm just wondering if you feel that these uh, individuals that you're promoting are qualified to supervise, for example, IT, do they have that kind of experience, uh, that they have background in IT? Uh, well, uh, currently, I supervise the IT department, and I, I don't have any I, IT experience, uh, nor do I have any uh, prior contract uh, and procurement experience, nor any HR experience. However, I think the longevity of Mr. Heron here, uh, almost 30 years, uh, understanding the organization uh, from IT, HR, uh, contracts, and procurement, I think bodes well for its capacity and experience to, to manage those departments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Any, any other questions? I have another question. Okay, uh, yes, Commissioner Cheryl Davis. Mr. Williams, I heard you say when Commissioner Shaw asked the question about the experience, you said that you said that you don't have experience but you're overseeing these particular departments. Have you thought about maybe reaching out or looking hiring to hire someone who has these expertise? Uh, or do you plan to send the um I guess Mr. Herman and Mr. Tool to classes with get the experience? So if I understand you correctly, it's it's uh, it's about uh, do I have plans to send Mr. Heron or and or Mr. Tool, even though his item is is later, to classes and regarding the contracts, procurement, and IT? Right. Um, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So 
Um, over the 30 years of Mr. Heron being here at this, this agency as the Director of, of Finance, um, the, the experience of contracts management, financial management, um, has definitely been um, uh, inherited uh, through, those, through, through those years. Um, obviously, uh, if uh, Mr. Heron as a professional believes, uh, such as myself, needs that he needs to go to a contract procurement class, such as I have done, um, I believe that he will request that. Um, that would be the same thing with uh, IT. Uh, and obviously, since he's been a director of finance, he wouldn't need to go to a, a finance class for the supervisor, the, the manager of finance. As a respect to Mr. Toole, uh, Mr. Toole has already created, um, completed the Nail Rod uh, Executive Director's Training uh, Program, uh, which is almost um, compatible to the Rutgers Fada University Executive Director Certification Program that I'm going through. Okay, understood. All right, well, thank you for sharing. Appreciate it. Any other questions from the board? We should have. Okay. Yeah. So if we don't have any, any additional comments from the board, we'll go ahead and open this to uh, um, the, the public for a public hearing. Anyone would like to, public comment, rather. Anyone would like to speak on this matter? It's, excuse me. Uh, yes, Annette Walker, Sartini. Um, I heard Mr. Williams say that they had uh, merged and um, we could not find on record a business license for the prior organization, which was the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. And we've seen that there's been a difference in the um, email address. They've added a V in the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. But we also saw where it said that the Housing Authority, this particular, I guess, new organization with the new structure, it, um, I guess, received a business license September 2019. Ms. Walker, uh, if I may, this, this item is relative to an HR matter of changing the, the um, title and job duties of our finance manager to um, you know, the chief chief uh, operating officer, I believe, yeah, chief well, administrative officer, and so the uh, the merger and all that that's uh, a separate matter. This is a new organization that was formed out of a few different housing authorities at the time: County Las Vegas and North Las Vegas. So, do you have any comments or questions relative to the the changing of the job classification, retitling, and new job descriptions? Well, that's what I was saying. Was these new titles and new responsibilities and duties is that due to the new business structure oh, no, no ma'am so the formation of the southern nevada regional housing authority correct my dates if i'm wrong was in 2010 and uh is that correct 2010 but that's what i was but saying. anyway that that we structure. didn't find a business license on file from 2010 up until September 2019. So that's what I'm saying. Is this new structure, is it because there is a business license that has been filed with this particular agency? And what are they? This doesn't have anything to do with business licensing or, or the organizational structure other than the management responsibilities of well, the executive director and the finance manager, how they're restructuring the, the top level management duties to have more bandwidth and cover more thoroughly the operations that we, and the responsibilities that we have as an agency. So yeah, there isn't a, a correlation between that and what you're talking about. Well, is there a difference between the uh, new structuring? Is there a difference as far as the agencies is concerned? Do you understand the question that I'm asking? Because I think it's a different agency altogether. We can refer that to our, our, our legal staff. Okay. Oh, no. So you're asking, I'm sorry. So I, I'm, I'm the not question is, question. the question is, is that they was, the, the, they, the email address was S-H-N-R-A. Now it's S-H, I mean S-N-V. R H A. So if V has been added, 
But however, from 2010 to 2019, there was not a business license for the SNRHA.